Good afternoon, guys. How are you? How's everybody doing? I hope still have some energy left for uh, you know things uh, days coming to an end. Um, before I start, a quick just show of hands. How many guys have uh, know what quantum does? Okay. How many guys have played with quantum? Okay, not so much. <clears throat> yeah, because I was the talk's title was quantum on quantum, so I want to make sure you know. How, how much people understand how, what quantum does. Obviously, it's a user story. We're going to go over how we use quantum in our internal production environments and how we run, you know, how network virtualization simplifies networking so much that you can actually run, you know, another layer of abstraction on top of it, like kind of like inception for networking, if you will. So <clears throat> let me introduce myself. I'm Saul McBear. Uh, I was a founding member of the Quantum Project. Uh, I worked for Nicira. Till, till about now, I, I'm, uh, now I'm at VMware. We, we are part of the network uh, and security business unit. Uh, we, we, we are actively involved with the OpenStack community. We, uh, I'm going to go through our user story of how we use OpenStack internally and wh how we, what are the cost benefits and the agility benefits we have uh, achieved doing so. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, uh, follow me. Feel free to follow me at, uh, on Twitter. I, I post about you know quantum, uh, how things are changing, how things are evolving, interesting user stories, and uh, and uh, let's get started. So t this uh, we had quite a few user stories today. A lot of people do you know dove down to the technical detail, the network architecture, or you know the high-level OpenStack deployment. I'm taking a little slightly slightly different approach to it. I'm kind of looking at what are the benefits mostly we achieved, and we'll get a little into how we did it. And you know, obviously, you can ask me questions uh, on details of any of the as any of the aspects. I'm going to hold off till the end for Q and A. Um, so, getting started, let's see. I'm going to make sure I know what the time is. Um, we, we, so like like all of you guys, we were you know nice year with us. Pretty small company. We 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 created scale. We grew really rapidly. Um, everything was physical uh, or I mean virtual, but you know vir just virtualization, no cloud kind of environment. And that was definitely very rigid. It it, it was not because uh, you know our developers, everybody said, "Oh, give me cloud." It's just that it was out of necessity. We wanted to move fast, and if you are stuck in the physical world, it was difficult to move fast. And uh, that's what uh, drove, you know, was the main, I guess, impetus to just trying to figure out how we use OpenStack internally, um, you know, to enable us to actually accelerate uh, what, what what we do. So our main use case was first, you have a bunch of networking developers, you know, probably the best in the world. <laughs> so that, that that's a good thing, but the problem is that you don't want them to, uh, you know, put them on your production network. We, we still run a network, and uh, if, and they're experimenting. We're building next generation networking technology, uh, so we have a very different set of challenges than a traditional enterprise does because, you know, they can actually take your network down because we, we are doing things which nobody probably does. So how do we actually isolate? Like, it's essentially what we do for work, for uh, servers, we isolate them. How do you do that for network? We have a product which does that. So like, how can we use it? To actually self-enable uh, ourselves to move faster, we are a networking developer. If we don't virtualize the network, you know, we actually will hurt ourselves. So it is like a real necessity. Like this was the only, going to open stack clouds, going to network virtualization, was the only way kind of out for us, uh, unless we want to take the risk. You know, one day, some c super smart, crazy de networking de developer is going to take the whole thing down just because he was trying to play with. You know how we can how we can change how we do uh, multicast handling in 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 in, in, the, in the in our virtualization layer or something. So next uh, use case was uh, we in I see we're we're you know fully software company where we make distributed systems to handle network virtualization. Uh, we deliver software really fast. We we believe in agile methodology every four weeks for enterprise software that's you know not. Unheard, unheard of, and a big bottleneck to achieving that kind of agility, that kind of speed, is continuous integration. Build continuous integration, and uh, 
and at, at low cost. We, we, we were a small, uh, you know, scrappy startup. Uh, we didn't have, we couldn't dedicate hundreds of uh, physical servers to do continuous build and integration testing. So we wanted to have the agility of, or the scale of big, the big guys. You know, maybe we, you know, can. How can we use our infrastructure, our developer work, work on uh, environments, maybe at night to do continuous integration where nobody is using it? The only real uh, option is, you know, you can't do anything unless you use cloud. So, like, oh, now we have a shared pool of capacity. The developers or whoever is using it in the morning, the workloads actually die down in the evening. You can use it for a different set of tasks. In, 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 you know, for, for the throughout the whole night, the same sh you know, you're reducing your resource requirements by by a huge factor. So that you know, we, so we have this dedicated build environment runs at, at capacity all, at all, all the time, and then when there's cloud capacity, we burst into it. The, because we are using a virtualized network, there is you know we can it seems as the same network, and you just grab compute capacity. They have L L2 or L3 reachability. Most of the times, we actually provide L2 reachability, and voila, there you go. You have you know, more capacity when you need it, and that accelerates our uh, ability to deliver what we do best, to deliver software. Third use case is that we have a whole bunch of application. This is a complex you know, exchange kind of application, but we have a bunch of applications like this. Uh, our, our actually network virtualization solution is it's pretty complex in, in to deploy. Once we deploy it, it's easy for users, for OpenStack users or any other cloud management platform users to virtualize the network, but it is not easy to deploy it internally. So the, this use case was driven by, you know, accelerating, I guess, time to revenue. Like, we have to do proof of concepts, go to customer sites. How do you develop really complex applications fast? It used to take us, uh, I'm going to go over how long it used to take us, but it used to take us a few days to how do you bring them to the cloud and deploy it in, in, in seconds? We, you know, we did that by essentially, once you virtualize it, we can author these labs or these applications and the topologies, what, what are the different uh, elements which go to different networks, and kind of have this, uh, if you will, a manifest, uh, which goes with every one of them. And then you, know, you click a button, Within a minute, you get the entire infrastructure deployed, and we do do a whole lot of that because every time it's a sales guy or our SAEs have to do a demo, they need to do it. And before it used to take them at least a week to rig the physical hardware to do it. And uh, that was definitely an inhibitor to our product ad adoption and how fast we can actually demonstrate the value. So that was this, this was another out of necessity requirement, like. How do we make these com complex enterprise applications work fast? And so that was our final use case. And uh, so, um, and uh, other few things I wanted to go over was since we went down this path of building our own OpenStack cloud, what are the and with network virtualizing network with quantum, why did we do it? And just give you contrasting you know, well, well, how it was before and what, what were benefits we got out of it. And then we can uh, dive into questions later on on any of this, how we, how, if you have questions on why we think we had these problems or how did we actually accelerate this uh, numbers I'm talking to you about. So uh, before uh, quantum, I was talking about my first use case, remember, so every developer pretty much, we are a small company, so we, the only way we could actually make sure they don't bring down the corporate network was that every developer had, it, had their own private VLAN. And it, nothing goes outside that boundary, uh, anything else, you know. And that's also still risky, you know. These are, these are pretty good networking developers talking about. Um, we, our networking guys are pretty nervous. But, uh, but even, even with that isolation, it was not fast enough because people are moving into different projects or they were to collaborate. You know, two, uh, two guys are working on a different feature that you know, and you're, oh, you have to change their VLAN so they can actually, they, they're, they're collaborating when they're coding. So how do they test it if they're not in the same test environment, right? So every time you make changes, it takes a couple, at least a couple of days, even for a fast startup like us to actually get the networking guys involved that would change and give the right guys access to the correct VLANs, everybody on the same page. And uh, that was a really big win for us to actually virtualize the network 
a click of a button, you get what you want. You have this notion of projects you can just share between multiple people. You can add, delete, depending on you know who's working on it. And you know, I, I say 20 seconds. It's really not 20 seconds. It's like a it's like a it's under a second API call. 20 seconds to actually you know drop drop down the UI, select I want this network. This is these are the guys I can want to uh, give access to this project. And there you go. So what do you got got out of it? You know, nobody takes on the Kafka network anymore, <laughs> right? So, so that that was that was a really big win. It 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 helped us go the go the uh, go down the path of this continuous integration, fast uh, development modules, uh, fast deployment. The second uh, scenario I was going to talk about was that, uh, I was, like I was talking about our build and QA and continuous integration use cases. Um, our, as we the, grew the product, it became more complex, more features. That mean, means that all this means one thing. It means you know QA is going to say, "Oh, I need more resources to test it. I need more uh, time. Uh, builds take longer." Um, and that, that's how most companies actually slow down. Or most really large enterprise environments is just you go from you know three week development cycle to six week, and before you know it's six months and and everybody knows what happens after that. And we, we from fundamentally, we, the company we structured, we were all about agility, speed, and flexibility. And we were like, we can't go down that path. We can't have, we have to fundamentally redesign the way we develop things, the way we, we have redesigned the way we don't do networking. We have to redesign the way we function as a, as a company. And uh, that, that, that's how we, we are like, oh, we can't scale by like incrementally adding more capacity or even renting capacity co-location facility, none of the models work. They're not cost prohibitive for the kind of scale we operate at. We are, you know, our products being used in really large customer environment, really the world's largest telcos, hosting providers. Um, this was unfeasible. So what do we do? Uh, you know, most networking guys, they don't give, you know, guaranteed bandwidth. You know, if you need 10 gigs for an application one day of the year, you don't, you know, you can't build you, a lot of times you actually build the network to that capacity, and that but it was not an option for us. So you, we did what, what is the next best thing is we try to uh, oversubscribe our capacity. And, the, and OpenStack, or the cloud environment, really led us to that. And we actually started now not only oversubscribing, but efficiently sharing this as a single fungible pool of resources. You know, a lot of del everybody has their Macs or whatever where you write code. But you need to deploy it to some machine to test it, to you know build build a few networks and uh, run unit tests and and such. So developers come in, uh, you know they have their code wherever it's in the repo. They pull it out. They can launch up a VM to actually push down the unit test to run the unit test there, do functional validation. And you know a lot of times most of people don't really need that VM anymore. If if you have really good automation and infrastructure to do that. And then, so when they go home, we, there is no need to actually have that VM anymore. So there was a cultural change. People have to get used to it that everything has to be automated from ground up, from day one. Nothing can be manual, can be that we, we can't do without automation. And it's it's kind of a it's usually painful when you do when you introduce cultural change, but it pays you know I guess many fold exponential dividends down the line because now every, everything is automated. It gets, gives you new. Uh, I guess magnitudes of flexibility and return on your inv initial investment of uh, on, that you did on automation. So, so developers, we started trying to do encourage that. Any persistent data is stored on stored on volumes or you know some kind of persistent storage. But the VMs just poof, at the end of the day they're done. We don't need them. You don't you release the resources. So now all of the night, if you if we see our ga monitoring graphs of our cloud, uh, you know it. it, it it goes up and then it, it goes down. And that we're like, oh, now we can actually multiplex capa that, that capacity and now start using it for a different function. And that's how we used it to accelerate our build and continuous integration by making sure our, comp our compute capacity is always at like maximum utilization for different use cases. And then we can prioritize who gets how much quota to make sure that we are always utilizing it at, more, at the highest utilization. Usually, compute capacity is really cheap. It's about most people have, have challenges. It's, it's because it's really difficult to deploy to um, in, a, in a fast, flexible way to use it to harness that capacity. So 
that's what the, the, our OpenStack deployment kind of gave us. And, uh, you know, that was, that, was, that was a result that we, we were able to continue to accelerate and innovate at the pace we were as a small company, but having become a lot, little larger with a lot more features, a lot more developer, we kept on moving at that, that velocity. That, that business velocity is, is kind of, it's really priceless, right? I mean, it's not about the 20 boxes of servers you got, but it's, it's the agility you, you get as a business to actually grow and uh, you know, achieve new levels, which nobody in your, in your uh, industry or none of your competitors could actually do. I mean, so that was a fundamental differentiator or motivator for us to do this. Next was the, my third use case I was talking to you guys about. <clears throat> that was I was I was telling about you know every time we had we had uh, to do a proof of concept of our network virtualization solution we you know it had these really humongous three of these boxes we need a particular set of you know administrative networking configuration and to do some uh, you know multi destination traffic offload boxes. Some, device, some other devices which interface with the external world. Somebody has to go install ISOs on them. Uh, you know, you have to get, if it's a customer site or something, it, you know, it's even worse, you have to get their networking teams involved. They're like, oh, who needs which firewall for these boxes on this network, and it needs another, another second network, or you have to get switches. And yeah, it was just, uh, just a nightmare. I mean, I said three to five days, but those are, you know, you know, for really good customers who are all around here. It took them for really smart and brilliant and have a very efficient networking and operations team. It still took at least three to five days to get it up and running. And while it was great, you know, we were when we were small, we had a handful of people. But once we started scaling the organization, there was no way we could we could keep up with that model. Like three to five days was just too expensive to dedicate. And there has to be somebody to help you all all that time, right? Because because most of the time you're not doing anything fun or you know your sales engineers uh, they're not really installing or demoing the product they're they're waiting for infrastructure to keep up with uh, you know the, the speed people uh, want to uh, proceed so now i'm going I'm, I'm, this is the i'm going to do a demo is we, we have deploys as a complex application later on it takes up about roughly about a minute sometimes less so that was it was not about going from 3 to 5 Days to minute. I mean, even though that that's a great achievement, and it was a great accelerator now, but it was about simplifying all of that. Now that we have codified that into a schema or a, a manifest, I was like I was saying of this lab deployment topology. It needs these many VMs, three to four different networks, firewall policies here, and that's what I need. And make it happen. Go cloud, make it happen for me. So that's what a cloud environment does. You push a button, you you get that, right? So and about you wait a couple of couple of more minutes, it's all up 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 and running, and that's that that's humongous, right? It it accelerates your time to revenue, uh, many many folds. Like you know your sales engineering or human talent or human capital you have, it's is, is the most probably precious asset or in your company. So that's what we we are actually getting out of it. We, you know, it's not about money you're saving on your capex or any, you know all your opex or your data center infrastructure, but the business value you get at getting out of it actually going from you know five days to two minutes that's like I don't know exponential at the factor of uh, productivity increase you're going to get out of your workforce I mean and it's probably a good thing because most people when they do more they're going to feel more successful they're going to be able to do more and they're going to be happy as a as an organization as a company so that was the wrong one. <laughs> It is, this is supposed to be basically we increase your time to uh, time to revenue, you know, by in real exponentially many fold. So, oh, this is oh, I went back. Okay, yeah, we reduce your time to revenue by like by a humongous factor, like like a bazillion, pretty much if you do if you do the math of you know seven day or five days to to a single minute. Um, so you know, at a high level, that's that's why Nicira chose OpenStack. That's why we chose for network virtualization, and at the end of the day, that's why we chose Quantum with using network virtualization to enable a cloud environment that really uh, helps us achieve our mission to our customers, to our partners, and be able to innovate at the rate we have innovated, and continue doing so, and show the, show the world why we can do it, and we'll continue doing so. So at a high level, you know, this many people who have been working with Quantum. 
probably familiar with it. Uh, this is a high level picture. I'll just talk to it how things work. Now, environment, it's pretty much how a typical quantum deployment works. You know, the user makes a request you know, to a Nova controller, use your EC2 APIs your, or your Nova APIs. You're like, fire me, fire me up a VM. Um, we are using SX for our current deployment. Uh, we're going to upgrade to Folsom very soon. Um, but right now we're using SX. It fires off a call to the, the cloud controller, and the cloud controller you know, gives it hands over schedulers. The scheduler puts it on, on the message bus. It's like, need this much capacity, this flavor VM, go get it. Um, one of the compute workers who has the capacity picks it up where food or food was designed for. Um, the compute worker actually picks up that request, creates the virtual machine image, and it has the networking specs with it, which are the networks you need to create. Three networks, three, then it creates actually three NICs for the VMs. And in, in SX, we had some, a notion called quantum manager. That's how we integrated. It's, it's changed with Folsom. Happy to discuss if later on if anybody wants to know how it's changed. But uh, so it essentially creates those NICs, then makes calls to quantum using you know the quantum API saying, I need this NIC to be plugged into this network. Three NICs, these three different networks, and quantum go make it happen. Uh, you can make it happen using you know the open source, open vSwitch plugin we use uh, and our, our product because we eat our own dog food and we have to make sure we keep continuing doing that. So we use NVP, our network virtualization platform, to actually create a virtualized overlay network for every one of them and make sure that these NICs are plugged in. And you know, then Nova, Nova gets a uh, HTTP 200 request succeeded command. That means it's all is good. Nova powers of the VM, and Nova really doesn't know anything. Um, the VM is automatically on the network. It sees IPs. It sees everybody, all its peers. So even though this is virtualized networks, from a Nova perspective, from an OpenStack flow perspective, nothing changes. You know, it's the same thing you do with OpenStack, just that it, it's on a virtualized network, so you don't have to get anybody in, in, involved. It doesn't use, you know, it scales your physical network b better. It doesn't expose all your Macs and, uh, in, this, in your cloud environment to the physical network. So you build your physical network once, and you can, you can you know, get you can scale it really be better. You can make you can have a lot more workloads uh, working on the same thing, like cloud environments, dynamic, agile workloads. Where we are doing this every day. I'll, I'll go over some numbers later on. So we have right now. I was looking up uh, our cloud. We have about two fifteen hundred or two thousand VMs running. But it's not about the, these are not VMs. We just spun up and we ran it. We actually bring it up and down, up and down every day. These networks, like you know, thousands of networks, up and down and up and down every day. Imagine. I mean, your traditional IT infrastructure, if you're a networking guy, you have to be able to do that to actually get the business velocity that you want you know, to be able to for your software development, for your you know, customer side proof of concepts. It just isn't fundamentally possible. Like that's, that's like a bazillion, like I was saying, time productivity increase. It just cannot happen. So, and, and then you know, we get a VM, uh, get a network. Uh, so we make a few of those calls. We have a, you know, our, our typical Product is like takes about 13 VMs or 12 VMs, four or five core networks. Um, you know, these calls about take a total of uh, I would say about a minute, maybe two if, if there is a lot of load. And there you go, and everything is done. Um, as for details, uh, when a request comes in the quantum uh, front end API, it, it, it gets delegated to the plugin you're using. In our case, it's NVB plugin, it go, goes to the NVB cluster. The NVB cluster is, you know, is a scale-out distributed system which actually manages all of the, the switching elements inside all of the compute hypervisors we have. We have a mixed environment. Actually, we use KVM. We use Zen because we work across everything. So we, our cloud actually has, you know, we try to support as many of them as possible in, a, in the single environment. And, uh, and then, from it, like I, I already talk, talked to you about the user workflow, how things happen, nobody sees a change. Underneath the covers, what's happening is the, uh, the network virtualizer, the controller is programming the virtual switches at every layer to, s to f tell it how to actually use the net, you know, create a tunnel between where the, wh whatever, wherever the packet needs to go. So that's why the packets never go on the physical network. They get encapsulated and sent it to the right destination uh, automatically somehow. I'm happy to discuss more about that, but this is that's beyond the scope of this, this presentation. So. What else do I have? 
funny lines. So once we had this, I wanted to share is how, you know, the kind of adoption. It's, it's not that we are using a dev test. Some people say, oh, they're using dev test. They're using production. We use, we are running essentially, you know, if, if we're, an, we're a company, we are, who, are ena who are enabling clouds or really large enterprise public clouds, we have to, be, you know, we bet we're gonna bet our, uh, run our business on it. So we kind of run across, the, across all sectors, customer support, training, dev and QA, sales, SE. This is like real data I got from like about a week ago. We're just curious to what kind of the distribution we had. So you, as you can see, you know, it's essentially every part of a business runs. And I actually went to our top three you know, the productivity boost we got out of, out of this uh, effort, actually doing, uh, running an open stack cloud or running a cloud with using network virtualization. But it, it, across each of these uh, verticals, we had similar, just unimaginable, uh, I guess, gain in value and how much more productive we have been. So uh, this is number of instances, CPU utilizes memory, but it's about the same. You can say you know the best. Most of the users are on Dev and QA, and uh, it used to be a Dev and QA and uh, Sales and SE. But we started kind of splitting. You know, the sales guys now kind of could do uh, things faster. So uh, this actually talk, talks about uh, uh, how many hours people have spent. Also, uh, kind of takes that into account. So that's why the training and labs started taking more and more portions because that's where people spend time. Before all of that was conversion to us one single pie. So, so yeah, across all, all aspects of the, our com company, we have had a really significant productivity boost just because we could, we could have get the agility we have never been able to get. Um, I, you know, people, a lot of people were talking about, um, does this thing work? Is this stable? Uh, is OpenStack ready? So I just got a graph out of you know our adoption curve. You know it's it's in April we we launched this cloud because that's when a company started growing and we had to continue. We had this immediate challenge and how do you do it? And this was the only way to do you know the fastest, the path of least resistance, fastest way to actually be able to solve those problems and have that gain that kind of agility. So we, as you can see, we have a, we had a pretty steep uh, g growth curve. It's pretty much mimics the uh, radar company was g g growing. Um, I put a circle over there because that looks like, you know, we had a failure, it was not really a failure. That's in August, end of August. That's when ICO was acquired by VMware. So the IPs got, the monitoring system got re-IP'd. So the, the, this monitoring system, which actually keeps track of it, we use Ganglia, and it just lost connectivity, so it thought the world ended, but <laughs> it, 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 it isn't what it looks like, so that's, but other than that, it's been, a st and the other thing we have seen is a step function. Uh, that's because we kind of have quotas for developer. It, it's, 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 been, it's been kind of like a, like a drug, if you, if you will, <laughs> because the more we give, the more, more they consume, and it just doesn't come. In, and I, I, another way to look at it, uh, the way I look at it is, uh, it, it, must, it, it actually gives them such productivity boost that there's the, not a lot of them just can't go back to the old way of doing things. So like I cannot be that unproductive now that I've, I've gotten used to this fast, agile, productive way of doing. I'm delivering better, I'm performing better. Every, every person actually can do more with a lot less. And not only do more with a lot less, but do things faster and do it, do it himself without getting anybody involved. And in our, we are, since we are, we are really focused on networking, uh, we never get any of the IT, network infrastructure, everything is self-service. And our network infrastructure teams don't really care about it because uh, it's contained. It's it's virtualized. You can't do any damage. You know, you can you can shoot yourself on the foot, but you know, be my guest. Do it yourself. You pay the price. Um, then this step function I was saying is because of quotas we have put in because of that that reason. So that's think, things. That, and I, I I assume that we're going to add some more hypervisors. The quota will go up. Other things to note is over here. This is the load we are tracking. The reason we are tracking loads, not by number of VMs, is because we, we I was like I was telling you earlier, we try to fundamentally change the way we develop software, the way we do business. So it's we don't really, you know, use the cloud, but use it in the old way, like spin up a VM and leave it on instead of my machine under my desk. Now have a VM in the cloud. I mean that does give you a lot of benefits, a lot of productivity boost, but not not in the way if you actually fundamentally change you how you're using those VMs. If you're using it as ephemeral 
pieces out in there. I'll use it on demand. I have, everything is automated. I can, you know, I can use Chef or I can use scripts or something else to deploy my application and get it going in, in a couple of minutes. Then everything is ephemeral. So these are like load which we experience every day and at different times if I have to a different graph, it will actually go, go down. It's, it's, it doesn't, it's in a constant load. So that's the another big uh, benefit we uh, gain from going using the cloud is like the cultural change. That's actually the most invaluable benefit you have gained. I mean, it's great, cloud's great. You get CapEx efficiency, OpEx efficiency. You can do things uh, you couldn't do before. But the cultural change, organizational change, that's usually the biggest barrier. And once you actually successfully implement it, you have got that change, you have a lot more agile organization. You can do a lot more things or, or you know, invest resources or do it faster for your business priorities that you couldn't do before. So, so I don't think, let's see how much time I have. I have a little time, so I'll, I'm gonna go uh, and talk about our demo topology, what I'm gonna deploy at the lab. I was topology I was talking about is essentially these, uh, we, have, we have, essentially I can go over what, what it is, but it's a bunch of VMs. Need, they need four different networks, private, I isolated networks, different security policies. They can't talk to each other, and that's because we do network virtualization. Some of these components are over the management network for management traffic, and you know, data network is essentially you know, a, a physical fabric where you use to do overlays on top, and you know, this is a demo topology, so you know, you know a, a sales guy goes in there to show what's going on. This, so I'm gonna show, and a second sales guy comes in for a different customer, he shows up another tenant. So we can create a multiple of these and do it fast under, within a minute or so. So without further ado, let's try to do the demo. It's always a little challenging. I'm doing one of these, so. So what I'm, so here is our cloud UI. This is essentially a front end to uh, Nova. Um, we, we, have, we, we could use Horizon. We just had this use case of authoring labs. Um, there was nothing like that, and we were moving fast, so we just put a UI up against the Nova API. It's not doing anything fancy, just using the Nova API, just a different UI. Um, so we have here this thing called labs, which are essentially you know, a collection of manifests, a bunch of VMs and networks and firewall policies, how I want this environment to look, li look like. So I have this thing called OpenStack Quantum Training Lab. You can see the requirements needs like, you know, 14 meg, uh, gigs of RAM, uh, 12 CPUs, seven machines, seven servers. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, uh, so here I, I can monitor the status using, uh, this is because we are using the, NVP plugin for quantum, you can see there it is, you know, my, I'm, it's an, I'm the tenant, I have no switches, no ports, and I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this lab, and it probably takes me a few minutes to, okay, it's, you see it's just starting to build out all the VMs, it's just a NAT VM to, show the external connectivity, there's a network controller. This is a, this is a quantum uh, demo lab I'm deploying actually. Uh, we were actually gonna use this, uh, if you guys have time, tomorrow morning to, uh, to enhance on lab on uh, using our cloud to uh, give you uh, experience with how to deploy quantum and you know install it and get, get familiar with the commands and such. So I'm deploying the same lab, but we're gonna do for all of a uh, whole bunch of, as many of you as we can tomorrow to get experience with it. So it's doing it as we have seen in the networking side, we can go and debug and see what, what has happened. We can see that we have a whole bunch of ports, which are these and logical switches, which are essentially a lot of networks which have come up, which this lab needed and they're live. They're, yeah, it's gonna take a few minutes to spawn. Um, so while it's happening, this is happening in the background, this is doing everything at traditional, what we used to do in, I was saying like five days, right? You rig up a server, you give, give them this much capacity, create the network, and all, then there you go, it's, it's done, creating the entire uh, topology. And uh, now the infrastructure is created essentially of these, that complex uh, app I was showing, but uh, 
the VMs are actually now installed, you know, booting up, and some of them are booting up from a remote volume and attaching them, and there are scripts inside them to actually do that, and that's what's going on in the background. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you the network connectivity that all the network is in up, and uh, show you that they're real VMs. There's a little latency, it might take me a few minutes. But we, we, we might have to actually, you guys, it might take a little more than a few minutes before they're actually all booted up fully and uh, pingable and stuff. So I, will, I guess I'll, I'm going to start taking uh, questions now you have, and while this thing happens in the background, and then uh, once it finishes, I can do the ping test and such. So if we have any questions, please come on to the mic. Uh, and yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, could you talk a little bit more about the ten lane? Is and maybe uh -huh. contrast it to Open vSwitch and GRE, and then uh, maybe talk a little bit about the roadmap. Or are you going to be extending to things like VX lane and then to GRE? And so so tunneling, it's it's from an open stack perspective, you don't never see a tunneling protocol. You see, I want a virtual network, you get a network. I want these VMs on this network, you get it. As far as what the the NiceOS product supports, yeah, it supports. Uh, STD, it's an ITF draft. It supports, it's going to support VXLAN. It supports GRE. And uh, it can use any tunneling format. It's just a low level protocol detail uh, of how you do virtualization. But the real value is from an OpenStack, from a user perspective, the value remains the same. Like you're going to get virtual networks and it's going to work from day one. Go ahead. So um, it appears to me that you have packaged a bunch of VMs, the network policies, and the security policies together using some template. I was just curious about how you created that. Is it a an open source template? So, so the the template of this app I was showing the that's why I said we created our own UI. So yeah. it's just an XML descriptor file saying that these are the components I need, and based on that it makes a bunch of calls to Nova and Qu Quantum to get the network set up, get the VM set up, and plug them in. Just a refinement, of the, if you would say, on base OpenStack APIs. And because that was our use cases for you know, our pre-sale kind of function. This is still booting up, so it's going to be a few more minutes before actually it's all live. Is that available uh, via open source, that template? Uh, it's, it's nothing really fancy. You know, all the APIs are there. You can, uh, everybody, everybody's actually, uh, uh, free to take those APIs, and it's, it's really easy to uh, cobble something together. We had some, we had a couple of guys who did did, and did it in a free time over like uh, three, four days. So are you doing We're firewall happy policies? We're to open source it if you think there's any value in it, but it seems very specific to our use case. I mean, I see a lot of value in that. Are, are you doing firewall policies, nadding, a whole lot of, you're grouping everything together yeah, so for the lab mm -hmm. in that XML descriptor, right? Pretty much what you need. So those policies are actually, uh, there's one distinction to be made. They're just calls to quantum, or quantum extensions. So we are not actually make calling firewalls. We are not creating firewalls. Or any, we're doing, not doing anything logic. This is all front end. So it's just making API calls. So you know anybody with you got a g good Ruby on Rails developer and you know, give him the Nova and quantum API, I don't think it will be really hard to you know, churn it out real quick. Yeah, any more questions? Okay. Actually, I'm, I'm try to see if my other VMs are also booted up. It's going to take a few minutes. But yeah, but I think it, it's going to take a few minutes to boot up. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm running out of time. Probably one minute left. So you guys are happy to come back to, to me at the VMware booth. I'm going to be there. I can continue finishing up the demo and pings and such. Thanks for your time. Thank you.